just to summarize what you said, because we went through a lot of uh, things, uh, one of the things that you, know, you could compare from back in the Soviet era was that uh, healthcare was always within reach and you never really had to worry about the cost. And that's one thing. So polyclinic, as I understand, is a primary care clinic. Is that right? Yeah. So um, so that's a that, uh, what? Sorry. The first unit sort of of care. The first unit. Yeah. So we, we equated with primary care uh, system. So that's what's been missing now since the post-Soviet era, right? The, the lack of primary care and that leads to increased hospitalizations because a lot of neglected uh, health issues. They're still underutilizing hospital hospitals compared to other averages in the region. Mm -hmm. So it's not just preventive care, it's just for-profit care. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's the entire healthcare system set up to, uh, to be based on who can pay, you know, so that the only sort of the demand for healthcare um, to meet that to supply that so if you don't have the if you don't have the ability to pay if you don't have the ability to also navigate this incredibly complex world of healthcare that's set up by lots of fraudulent get rich quick schemes kind of place is also a problem so before you had a guide to help you understand healthcare your polyclinic Mm -hmm. Now that's over, you're no longer tied to a neighborhood polyclinic. You can choose your primary care. Now they call it a family doctor, which is like American system. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you can choose your family doctor. So that means there's going to be tons of family doctors that are trying to make money off you and so on and so on. And, and there's also no monopoly um, regulations. So like the people who have, who have the insurance also or close to the insurance companies um, in reality uh, that own the, the pharmacies and then they own the hospitals and the primary care. So, and I know this because you can actually go and read the reports where they say this themselves that, oh, we, our business model is great. It keeps growing because now we do referrals to the hospital. So, so our primary care, we buy all the polyclinics up you know, all the, then they, our doctors tell them to go to our hospitals and then go to our pharmacies, right? So, yeah. it's, so it's, it's really, it's, it's really insane, really, the, the, the like how this even continues to go on uh, is, mm -hmm. is mind blowing. So a person doesn't know anything. Um, they will go, they will be told they need to get these and these things they'll go and get them because they're afraid they don't understand they could like die or something or have worse problems. So of course they're gonna sort of be, they're sort of taken hostage by the system. Um, and this, right, you know, brings up their cost. And that's mm -hmm. what the government was paying, but now they're only paying partially. And if you make a certain amount of makeup, they're not paying, uh, you're supposed to get private insurance. So it's a really mm -hmm. unsustainable model altogether. Yeah. And no one is healthy because of this. It literally shows in every possible way that people are much less healthy now than they were before. Interesting. And so you mentioned before about the nurses. Um, is there anything more you could tell us about the nurses? Like we want to hear the voice of Georgian nurses. Yeah, so one of the ways to show how this profit uh, system doesn't work is to show how there's been an incredible decline in nurses. So instead of having... Um, the reverse of of having three, four nurses per doctor, you have three, four doctors per nurse. Mm -hmm. And why is that? We know. I mean, you know, I know. Um, PMA, PHM knows um, that nurses are, you know, the building block of, of good health care, right? Without not just nurses, but health care workers, like having lots of doctors does not make the system automatically better healthcare. Like it doesn't give you like better outcomes. You really need the support staff. So the invisible, what they call like invisible labor in this sense, because nobody sees this a lot, is the support staff. So a doctor comes in for what, like maybe two minutes, you know, and just, but the rest of it is being done by the support, healthcare support, including nurses and orderlies and so on, janitors. Um, because 
the way since the breakdown of Soviet Union, nurses as a profession degraded. Um, nobody cares about nurses anymore. So if you go to a completely profit system, even if they didn't sell off the hospitals at first in the, in the 90s, the hospitals were like a marketplace. It's called public, but they're all private doctors. So you go in and you have to sort of buy healthcare from the doctors. There are just many of them in one area. So it's, an, it's actually not a public hospital. Right. It's a bazaar. Like you go to a market, you know, have different sellers under one roof that could be owned by anybody. Mm -hmm. So this is what in the 90s it looked like. Mm -hmm. So you you go to this place and like I've read I've, re I've read some like horrific reports of of like for, foreign like um, investigators who write for some of some of the health reforms being like outraged like people are just like dying on the floor like if you don't have money they're like we don't care so nobody wants to be a nurse because you pay the doctor directly so everyone's like oh I'm gonna be a doctor not a nurse because that way I can make money. Nurse works for a doctor. So if you get, so the doctor gets paid, like say per patient, you know, per service fee and so on, the nurse gets a tiny part of that. So the demand for doctors, medical doctor degree increases because mm -hmm. people want to have, be able to have money and, you know, profession where you're not the lowest level, you know, uh, market workers make more than nurses here, you know, like grocery store workers make more than nurses, completely degraded profession, incredible amount of stress and responsibility. And yet absolutely, you know, no, no support, no sustainability, no money, nothing. Mm -hmm. and so people leave the nursing um, profession and just in general lab, lab workers, technicians, they all leave, they all want to be doctors. So you have this incredible rise in doctors and a drop in nurses. Mm -hmm. So, and the doctors also do it because then they can also try to go abroad and like, you know, to Germany or what, wherever, whatever. Nurses right. also can, and they actually are being recruited as well. Mm -hmm. So the nurse um, becomes more invisible. So I, I argue um, that women, like regarding women's work and sort of the support work, post-Soviet or pro-market development has made what is considered more feminized work like nursing or taking care care work um, has hidden it more, degraded it more. And also because of more outpatient and also not going at all to the doctor has increased a uh, workload for women at home. So then you know, women have to take care of their mothers, their fathers, their husbands, or whoever, because the hospital won't, or they can't afford to put them in, 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 in other care. And so this is, for me, privatization of healthcare, though they say this is more efficient, actually has set back the visibility of women's work. And nurses are actually even even better condition because at least they're getting paid nothing but it still like shows that like they actually do work because women who do all the care work don't get paid at all right who takes care of that rest at home for five days or whatever when they the doctor tells you yeah. that's that's women who take care of them and so they are they've become even more vulnerable especially in conditions of no labor code or very weakening labor code especially in 90s and 2000s where you don't have time off medical leave from work you do now but it's still like just one and like strengthening as far as labor code goes so a woman would have to miss work and not get paid or be fear of even losing her job to take care of her family members and as somebody who's a housework like a informal worker in a market or so or a domestic worker, like um, who are you know informal as well, um, or just a regular house uh, a housewife will be doing extra work without any kind of compensation at all. So for nursing, I think it's been one of the worst things that happened to the nursing profession is that so they have like professionalized, so they made doctors more important in the sense. Um, they've moved them up from being just workers under the Soviet Union to now sort of middle class. 
uh, but they actually have degraded uh, nurses. Leaving all the other workers behind. Yep. Yeah. Understood. Um, so thanks for sharing that. Um, what what can we look forward to, you know, in the near future uh, with regard to healthcare in Georgia? Any positive news? Looking really bad. Um, they just one of the, our I consider one of our victories after so much of our of our unfortunately we couldn't do it like strikes or anything, but a lot of our worker advocacy and um, mobilizing work that we have done over the years, uh, especially during pandemic, uh, the government just issued a mid a minimum wage for for nurses, mm -hmm. which is not a lot, but it's still pretty much better. Like people's like income especially in the regions like tripled and quadrupled mm -hmm. um because they were getting such low pay so it's not like <laughs> it, it's not great but it's like it's like 200 it, or something or yeah. 250 or 300 something like that but like but they were making like less than 100 so for for a lot of people especially nurses in the regions were the most neglected and abused they really felt the increase um but it's really bad. Mostly it's nurses are trained here, um, are then, then they will leave. Most of them will leave. Even the prof if, Either they will leave, leave for another country to be a nurse there, or they will leave the profession because it's so horrible and mm -hmm. choose something else. And so mm -hmm. it's a very vulnerable pro profession. And this minimum wage is not enough to mm -hmm. reverse the trends. Um, we really need... Uh, to strengthen to make sure that Georgia especially because we were just on like some kind of list I don't know if it was like the red list of like countries where you shouldn't recruit from but I think we're like close to that yeah yeah I it's really I don't think we should have any recruitment I think nurses should be given you know so much money I think to actually start fixing our health care that should be one of the first steps we take Mm -hmm. uh, second is to re, you know, nationalize a lot of these private places. I would totally get rid of the private sector or at least limit it to a certain level um, before even making it like free for everybody as far as like the private for the insurance, because we saw what just mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. So definitely nationalization, increase in wages and also just coordination. It's a chaotic system. It's straight up like a market where everyone's just trying to take make money as much as possible knowing that the population is really sick it's a model that wants to put people sick lots of elderly lots of sick people of course they're preying on them we have one of the highest cesarean rates cesarean section like it's like 45 percent or something and and it's funny because even the most like like health or well, health experts who generally favor the market, even they're like, I think this is because of money. <laughs> it's like <laughs> even they come to those conclusions now that where you don't, there's no justification for that kind of high cesarean rates. Just no justification. So mm -hmm. you have to like needless entry intervention. I've seen it too. They scared my sister, told her that it was dangerous to give vaginal birth. Uh, completely twist her head and she said she was she was worried they were going to kill her baby or hurt her baby that c-section was the best thing for the child i could not even talk her out of it because she's like the experts are telling me they even mm -hmm. told her how to get um uh still you still have to like make it official why you miss c-section you know I told her to go get her eyes checked to make sure that you can justify it to make sure that her eyes were in bad shape, that like this like vaginal birth would blind her or something. It's just like the whole scheme of how to make sure she had a C-section. And of course, C-sections are much, much more expensive and also much more convenient for the doctor. You schedule it, you go in, two seconds later, you're out. So yeah, but of course, I'm you know the side effects of having only, like only profit care is is having you know really uh, needless interventions, C section, and of course through C section we know that it's dangerous, um, could be even more dangerous, especially if you get subsequent ones. It hinders uh, or it can actually hinder breastfeeding, bonding. You have to recover from childbirth <laughs> and you know a major surgery, and it's really hard on your body. It's absolutely not necessary. Mm -hmm. 
but it also probably relates back to you know the lack of health workers to uh, take care of a normal birth if there were more doctors and nurses probably if one doctor has to go then you know there's another doctor in the house who can look after the woman so they don't have to force a c-section it's you know like a chicken and egg question uh, which is which uh, it just goes around and around so I guess like you just said before it's uh, for with the experience of the nurses in Georgia the minimum wage was a good progress but it's not enough it's not just about the money you need to uh, improve the whole system whole, whole health system uh, to actually encourage them otherwise it would just give them more resources to leave yeah exactly. um, so Thank you. Thank you, sir, very much so both, uh, for sharing your experience and uh, the experience of the health workers in Georgia. Uh, we'll close the interview here and give our regards from PHM to all the health workers in Georgia. I will. Thank you. Okay, bye.